Maybe I'm just getting too old for Pixar these days. I don't know. I'm really hoping that's not the case since we've got Incredibles 2 coming out next year, but this film... Oh dear. Hey guys, this is going to be my spoiler review for the film Cars 3. If you have not checked out the film yet and you do actually want to check out this film, then go and check out the film first and come back to this review. Or if you just don't give a shit about spoilers, then welcome one and all. So the film opens up with the main character, Lightning McQueen, once again voiced by Owen Wilson. And we see him in his glory days, basically showing off how much he loves racing and how much he loves the sport and how much just he loves the thrill of it all and everything. However, in this film, you know, it's noted many times in this film that Lightning McQueen is in fact getting old and just like in the real world when you have famous athletes or runners or you know famous footballers or any other sport when you reach a certain age you've kind of got to retire because you know you can't keep up with the newbies the new blood that's entering the sport and that's the same thing that's happening with Lightning McQueen how you know he's not the fastest race car like he used to be in the other two films which we've seen him in uh, there's this other new hotshot uh, race car named Jackson Stewart Storm, who's voiced by Army Hammer. Uh, basically, he's the new kid on the block. He's got all the fancy new tech. He's much faster. Uh, he goes much faster in miles per hour than Lightning McQueen. And so Lightning McQueen is obviously feeling a bit jealous and feeling a bit upset by this because he's kind of like, he's not really taking in the winnings like he used to. You know, he's kind of like the oldest race car amongst them all at the moment since all of his old racing buddies have now gone on and retired. But Lightning McQueen's like, I don't want to retire, man. I love racing. Like, this is my thing. If, if I don't have racing, then what, what else have I got in life? And so this sets Lightning McQueen up on his own little personal story where he's trying to get better and be faster and try and be number one again even though he's quite old. A lot of the characters which I know people have found annoying in the other films such as Mata for example. Mata is hardly in this film which actually is something I found very surprising to be fair because even though you know Cars 3 is a bit more of an emotional film than the other two and you know kind of pulls on those Pixar heartstrings which they're famous for in their other more successful films like Up and Finding Nemo etc. You know Mata is one of those characters who's been in the both Cars films now and obviously he sells toys. Kids love him because obviously of his humour and his jokes and you know all that good stuff. But no, they actually took the mature decision for once and they thought, yeah, even though Mater sells toys, we're actually going to tell a really personal story with the character of Lightning McQueen. I swear to God, I'm not going to go into too much detail of this film because it was so predictable, honestly. Hence why this is a spoiler review, because if it was a non-spoiler review, then it would sound like I'm giving this film praise, but I'm not because I was bored for most of this film. I'm not going to lie to you guys, honestly, I didn't really find this film enjoyable one bit. It was so predictable, hence why I'm doing a spoiler review because if I I felt if I did a non-spoiler review then it would feel like I'm giving this film praise just by uh, pointing out some of the heart and humor that this film had but honestly while there was a little bit of humor and there were a couple jokes that made me laugh here and there you know it was nothing that made me really go yeah yeah this is a great film the plot is so predictable that I honestly predicted how the ending was going to go after the first half an hour into the film. Because we get introduced to this character called Cruz Ramirez who, she's not a racer but she trains racers. She's kind of like a gym coach essentially for cars. And obviously when Lightning McQueen wants to get in shape and wants to beat Jackson Storm and all the other new big high-tech hotshot racers, he goes to her. And so she try and trains him up and everything. But he wants to do things the old-fashioned way by actually going out on the road or on the beach and actually getting his tyres dirty, whereas this new character, Cruz Ramirez, wants to stay indoors, use the newest high-end technology, sort of simulators and everything, as she thinks technology is the way to train, but Lightning McQueen is old school, obviously, because he learned from the famous Doc Hudson, and that's what this film does. It kind of mirrors the first film in a way, where it harpens back to when Lightning McQueen was, you know, the hot shot racer who didn't really care about anyone, he was very full of himself, and then Doc Hudson was the kind of character character <laughs> Doc Hudson was the character that sort of brought Lightning McQueen back down to earth and said right kid you know even though you're a famous racer there's more to racing than just that you know you really gotta sort of like understand the heart of it and everything and so now that's mirrored in this film where Lightning McQueen is kind of the Doc Hudson in the situation where you know he's teaching Cruz Ramirez a few things even though she's the one that's meant to be training him but ultimately you know it's him training her essentially because we find out in the film later on she 
indeed has wanted to be a racer all her life. She hasn't actually wanted to be a trainer, it's just kind of, she's been stuck in that position most of her life. She looked up to Lightning McQueen, which is revealed in the film later on, and she's always wanted to be this racer, but she's never really had the confidence, she's never really had the push from her parents or anyone close to her to kind of get on the track and race with all the other famous racers. See, it's moments like this in the film where it's like earlier in the film when uh, Lightning McQueen first spots Cruz Ramirez and sees all the spark and fury she has in her. Uh, Lightning McQueen says to one of his bosses, he's like, oh wait, who's that racer? And the boss is like, <laughs> no, 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 that's not a racer, no, she's just a trainer. Honestly, it's foreshadowing at its best. Like, it, th there's even more foreshadowing of this later on in the film when basically uh, Lightning McQueen uh, makes a stop at one of Doc Hudson's old pals and uh, he meets up with some of Doc Hudson's old friends, old racing buddies to kind of uh, get a bit of confidence from them and find out like how did they deal with certain situations which Lightning McQueen is in right now whenever new hotshot racers would come in. And uh, yeah, and one of Doc Hudson's old pals says, oh, Doc Hudson used to write to us all the time, which I don't understand how cars could write. But yeah, he goes on to mention how Doc Hudson always used to tell them how much fun he had training Lightning McQueen and how, you know, even though he loved racing, the most funnest part of his life was training the next hotshot racer, which is Lightning McQueen, like we saw in the first Cars film. And then he goes on to say like how Doc Hudson was like, you know, it wasn't the racing that he enjoyed the most, it was training the next generation that he enjoyed the most. And after that one line, I was just like, no, all cards are on the table, boom, like, I can predict solidly how this film is going to end. Like, I had my younger brother sat next to me on my right, and my younger sister sat next to me on my left, and, you know, I was, like, there was one point I was going to turn to either one of them and be like, right, this is how it's going to end, right? But I thought, like, no, because if they're not, like, big film buffs like me, they might not have, you know, they might have not figured out how this film's going to end yet, so I won't potentially spoil it for them. But for me, who is a big film buff, who, you know, is obsessed with film, I love film, that's why I study it and everything, you know, I've seen this in so many films before, all the traits that are in this film, like the whole, oh, you know, you're dying out and this is the next generation, I've seen all this before, and honestly, it's all these tropes, these famous tropes which I've seen in other films before, where it's just building up to this moment in the final climax of this film, where we see Lightning McQueen during this race, and then all of a sudden he... Uh, passes the baton on to this new character, Cruz Ramirez, where basically he gives her the number 95, so essentially she's racing for him. So essentially it's his last race, but it's her first race as well. So he's given her a chance to be in the spotlight. And then ultimately at the end of the film, uh, yeah, Cruz Ramirez ends up working up the courage from Lightning McQueen. As you see him on the stand, he's kind of like Doc Hudson from the first film where Doc Hudson was on the top stand and he was kind of speaking to Lightning McQueen on the radio telling him all the manoeuvres to do in the race, how to win, how to beat all the other racers, how to sort of manoeuvre his way around. Again, it's the same, it, like I said earlier on in this review, it mirrors the first cars where it's like, right, now you've got Lightning McQueen on the stand and you've got Cruz Ramirez out there and he's kind of telling her like, right, I've been doing this for a long time, just like Doc Hudson was doing it for a long time, you know, it's kind of like, right, this is what you've got to do, don't listen to any of the racers, blah, 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 all that good stuff. And after a few pep talks here and there, ultimately, yeah, Cruz Ramirez ends up winning the race, and then boom, she is now the biggest hotshot race car in this car's universe, just as I predicted. <laughs> boom. And this is not something I'm proud of, no. No, honestly, I'm, I'm not happy that I predicted this. I'm actually really upset that I was right, because all throughout the cinema, I was like, I know how this is going to end, but please, please, please do some sort of twist. Do some sort of big twist or something like I don't know, even like, have it, let's say, like, Cruz Ramirez says, like, I don't want to be the racer, you know, I just wanted to race one time and that's it. I'm, I'm a one and done. I would have preferred that. But no, just the fact that I was able to predict every single beat of this story shows that this... <sighs> It didn't surprise me, unlike other Pixar films, which I've seen in the past, obviously, like, you know, there's been all these big twists and turns and things in the story you wouldn't expect, like in films like Up or Wally -E or Toy Story 3, you know, these films have good plot twists, you know, like the Lotso Hugging Bear storyline, I'm like... Wow, I didn't see him being evil, that's a good twist. Or it's like in Up, um, you know, uh, the old guy's uh, kind of the character he looks up to, the guy who lives in the big uh, blip. He's like, he turns out to be a villain. Boom, good plot twist. This film had no good plot twists whatsoever, honestly. I, I'm very disappointed with this film because I actually love the first two Cars films. Yes, the first two. Two, mate! Two!
Yes, I like Cars 2. Yes, you can murder me in the comments below, but hey, hey, hey. If I had to choose between watching either Cars 2 or Cars 3, I would actually choose Cars 2 any day. Even though Cars 1 is still the best one out of them all. But you get my point, because if I'm willing to watch Mater for two hours, rather than watch a Lightning McQueen personal story for two hours, that just shows that, yeah, the, the quality in this film wasn't good. And by quality, I mean like quality of storytelling. Like the animation obviously is like phenomenal. Like Pixar is known for its great animation. But yeah, no, honestly, the animation was fine. Like nothing wrong with that. But yeah, just the quality in storytelling is what drove me to hate this film. Anyway, guys, my overall thoughts on this film. If I had to give a rating, my rating for Cars 3 would honestly have to be a 2 out of 10. Wow! I was not expecting it to give this film that rating, honestly. It's been a while since I've watched a film where I've gone, I know how this ends. And that's another thing, they keep saying in this film out, oh, Lightning McQueen, look at you, you're so old, you're so old. But then you look at him in this film and you go, well, no, Lightning McQueen looks the same as he has in the other two films. But, see, that's one of the problems in this film. It's like, you know, with uh, the Cars universe, how do you know if a car's old or not? Well, simple, you know, you, you have a few dents, you have a few, like, your paintwork scratched a little bit. But no, they didn't do that with Lightning McQueen. They didn't have any of his paintwork scratched. Like, I can, I can understand you can't go out on the racetrack looking like that, looking with, like, loads of dents and scratches on you and look unprofessional. Um, but, you know, just to show that he is getting older, maybe at least, I, I don't know, like, draw a little bit of grey on, like, the bonnet or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, guys, what did you think of the film? Comment below. Let me know. I want to have a discussion with you guys. And, of course, if you like everything I've said in this video, then feel free to leave a like on this video. And if you disagree with everything I've said and if I've angered kids all over the world, then please feel free to leave a dislike in the video. There's always one. Anyway, guys, that's been it for this video. And I will see you guys on my next video. Until then, ta-ra. And now I really want a burger. God damn it, video game. Oh, I'm so hungry. Yum, that looks tasty. Oh, I my days. Cooking. I am legit torturing myself right now. Like, the only thing I possibly have to eat in my room is a pack of Jaffa cakes.